Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about domain and range, specifically in the cases where we have a table representing a relation or a function. We'll save domain and range with graphs for a separate video. So let's do some definitions first. We say domain is the set of possible inputs of a relation or function. So if we take all of the possible inputs, those are the domain. Then the range, or another word for this is the codomain, is the set of corresponding outputs of a relation or function. So the range is all of the corresponding outputs that go with the inputs in the domain. So typically in this curriculum, we use the word range to describe what's going on here. But if we do a more mathematically formal way of doing this, we'd probably call this the codomain. So it's the domain and the codomain but I'm going to use the word range just since this is typically the vocabulary that's used in this course. But just know you might have other teachers use codomain depending on their philosophy of this. So here are some things to know about domain and range with tables before we start an example. So what we'll do is write the values for either the domain or range in a set with curly braces, and then each of the values will be separated by commas. Then when we do this, Order of the items does not matter, so you can list the values for the domain or the range in whatever order you want. With sets, these can be rearranged, so I tend to write them in order from least to greatest, but it's still correct if you write them in any other order. So this would mean that the set 1, 2, 3 is the same as the set 2, 1, 3, or 3, 2, 1, or 1, 3, 2, etc. So you can reorder them in whatever order you'd like. Then lastly, in these cases, repeated values have no effect on the set. So there are cases outside of this class where maybe it will matter if you write the items more than once, but with domain and range, it does not matter if you write the items more than once. So the set 112 would be the same as the set 12. You can write them multiple times, but typically we remove the multiple instances and just write each value once. All right, so let's try this out on an example. Let's find the domain and range for the following relations. So I'm listing relations A, B, and C here. So these are the same relations I used in the video where we introduced relations and functions. So just as a note, if you watch that video, you'll know that relations A and C are functions where relation B is not. But even though this is true, we're going to find the domain and range for all of these. All right, so I'm gonna find the domains of these relations first, and then we'll do the ranges. So for the domain, we look at the possible inputs, and in this case, these are the x values. So starting with relation A, I'm seeing that my inputs are one, two, zero, and three. And so I could just list these in a set, and that would be it. However, as I mentioned, we can reorder the items in whatever order we'd like. So I personally prefer to order them from least to greatest, so I'm gonna do that here. I especially like it if I'm making solutions or I'm trying to compare answers with someone. It's much easier to check to make sure we have the same answer if they're listed in a standard order, but at the end of the day, you get to decide. So I could rewrite this as zero, one, two, three, and that would be my domain. Now for relation B, if I'm looking at my possible inputs, I'm gonna write these down for my domain and I'm just going to immediately write them in order from least to greatest. So I'm seeing I have negative one, negative one, four, and seven. So this would be my domain, but you'll see here that we have a repeated value. We have that negative one listed twice. So I'm actually just going to take that out and just write each item once. So negative one, four, and seven, and that would be my domain. All right, then lastly for relation C, Let's go ahead and write the input values. Those are our domain. I'm going to write them in order from least to greatest, and I'm going to remove the repeated input of two. So I have zero, two, five, six, and 12, and that's my domain. All right, so now we just repeat this process for the range, this time looking at the Y column because those are the outputs that go with the inputs. So for relation A, I have 1, 4, 10. Those are my possible outputs. Again, not writing the repeated value and putting them in order from least to greatest. Then in relation B, I have 3 and 8, ignoring the repeated items. 
And in relation C, I have negative three, zero, one, five, and nine. And there we go. All right, and that's what we have for finding domain and range with tables. So for domain, those are the possible inputs, which is typically the possible X values. And then for range, those are the possible outputs, which are typically the Y values. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.